Up this stair let no man climb, save the king, and those that he brings with him, if he bids them follow him. Then all those present were sworn to secrecy. There was a hill that was a holy site to both Gondor and Rohan, Amon Anwar, the Hill of Or. How bizarre that it was a secret to all but the kings and stewards of Gondor for millennia, and what were they guarding? Thanks for clicking! Join the fellowship uh, by clicking subscribe. After the War of the Last Alliance, Sildor assumed high kingship in place of his father. He made sure of the borders of Gondor before he would depart, and one of his duties would be the burial of Elendil, the leader of the Free Peoples and saviour of the Dúnedain in exile. The tomb of Elendil was put upon the top of a hill known as Elenar. It was chosen as it was the midpoint of Gondor at the time, and that was a hill that rose from the Firian wood, and the tree line was just below the top. Uh, which was bare as it had been levelled. There's a good description in the unfinished tales of it. And when they came to the summit, they saw there a wide oval place of level turf, unfenced, but at its eastern end there stood a low mound on which grew the white flowers of Alferin, and the westering sun touched them with gold. Elendil's tomb was that low mound, and that was on the eastern side of the summit. Upon the tomb were his kith, or runes, and these were just L N D L. And then despite this awesome boldness that would even put Johnny Sins to shame, this tomb was a secret and yet hallowed by the exiles, Isildur said that only an heir of Elendil himself could come and disturb his peace, hence the quotation in the intro. It became a centre of spiritual guidance for the kings of Gondor who'd go there in times of great need to look within. It was also there where they would take their heirs upon reaching manhood to tell them of its history. Now the stewards they would later take this honour after the line of kings became dormant in the south, but it was still a secret. Even though the name of Hill of Awe was known, its origin wasn't understood. The secrecy surrounding this hill was a mystery to even the second most powerful man in Gondor, the Prince of Dol Amroth. Stuart Kirion came to this place to swear an oath with Yorl in 2510 of the Third Age to form the Kingdom of Rohan, and with him came the Prince. Then the Lord of Dol Amroth, chief of those in the company of Kirion, went towards the mound and saw lying on the grass before it, and yet unmarred by weed or weather, a black stone, and on the stone three letters were engraved. Then he said to Kirion, Is this then a tomb? But what great man of old lies here? Have you not read the letters? said Kirion. I have, said the prince, and therefore I wonder, for the letters are Lambe and O Lambe. But there is no tomb for Elendil, nor has any man since his day dared to use that name. Nonetheless, this is his tomb, said Kirion, and from it comes the ore that dwells on this hill. Do the last sentence. Nonetheless, this is his tomb, said Kirion. And from it, now oh, we'll go again. Nonetheless, this is his tomb, said Kirion, and from it comes the ore that dwells on this hill and in the woods below. Now, Kirion would then remove the casket of Elendil from the tomb, in which had rested for over 2,500 years, as it was no longer the centre of the kingdom, and moved it to uh, Rath Dinan in, uh, in Minas Tirith to be with the rest of Gondor's kings. However, as this was now the hill upon which the alliance of Kirion and Yol had been proclaimed upon, it was now hallowed for another reason and for another people. This was the birthplace of Rohan. The name Halifirian meant in the language of the Rohirrim, Holy Mountain. Before their coming, it was known in Sindarin as Amon Anwar, Hill of Awe. For what reason was not known in Gondor except only as later appeared, to the ruling king or steward. Interesting tidbit here as well, the flowers that covered Elendil's tomb were known as Alfirin, Sindarin for not dying. It was also known as Uilos or Symbol Mina by the Rohirrim. It was the same flower which would cover the barrows of the kings outside of Edoras. With this alliance, the Hill of Awe was then guarded by a joint force of Rohirrim from the Eastfold and Gondor. The seventh and most western warning beacon of Gondor was then placed there, but of course, 
In the great days of Gondor, no beacon was built on the hill while the Palantiri still maintained communication between Osgiliath and the three towers of the realm without need of messages or signals. As this was such a closely guarded secret, how was this knowledge passed on? The tradition of Isildur, the passing of the law of the tomb to the heir, etc., would be written in a sealed scroll by the king. When the new king was crowned, then the scroll would be passed to them by the steward with all that knowledge along with other important things for the new monarch to know of. And so the history and significance of the Hill of Or was known to Aragorn and he would bring Eomer, king of the Mark, to once more renew the Oath of Yawl here some 500 years after the previous alliance and about 3,000 years after Elendil was laid to rest here. As Kirion had once said, this was so that the oaths here taken may seem of deepest solemnity to ourselves and to our heirs on either side. And how poignant then that as Kerion had foretold of the return of the king as he swore his oath beside the tomb and spoke words that filled those who heard them with awe, but as he stood up the sun went down in flame in the west and his white robe seemed to be on fire. Aragorn would be the one to renew that oath in the same location as the flame in the west. The sunset had not been one of demise for Gondor as it almost was, but a triumphant hour of defiance and rebirth for those of the west. Anduril flame of the west and the return of the king proved it as the final defeat of Sauron was completed. And yet, how strange that such a significant and revered location was guarded with such secrecy. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Gone with Gandalf. Good day.